Hello everyone and welcome to the chapter number 20 of Blender Master Course Object Info Node. And if you are new to this course, then do watch the previous 20 chapters from the link of the playlist in the pinned comment. So in this chapter, we'll be learning about a very useful node in Blender, which is called the Object Info Node. And the first question before starting anything is, what exactly is the use of this Object Info Node? So the Object Info Node is used to add different colors to different objects while you are still using the same material. And to understand it practically, we'll open our Blender file and let's delete this default cube by pressing X. Now let's press Shift plus A, go to Mesh and let's add a UV sphere. And now to give it some material, I need to add a shader editor in my scene. For this, I'll take my cursor over here, right click and select horizontal split. Now I'll take this line in the middle and left click to split the area into two parts. To convert this upper area into the shader editor, click on this icon here and select the shader editor. Now to give it a new material, click on this new button and here you have the default material applied to the UV sphere. Now let's go to the render view and by default the render engine is EV. So I'll go to the render properties and change it to cycles. Now if I go to the material and click on the base color to change its color, we can set the color of this object from here. So I'll change it to red color right now. And now if I create some duplicate of this UV sphere by clicking shift plus P and moving it in Y direction and left click to finalize. Similarly, I'll create two or three more duplicates by pressing shift plus D moving in Y direction like this. And let's create two more this side also shift plus D again and moving in Y direction. And now the last one shift plus D and let's move it in Y direction again. So now we have five duplicates of this UV sphere, which have the same material that is the material with the name material dot zero zero one. So all of them assign the same material and so they are showing the same red color. But suppose you want all these UV spheres to have the same material but different colors, meaning that the metallic, the roughness and all the other things should be same, but only the color should be different. And for this, you can use the object info node. So to add the object info node, I'll go to the shader editor, press shift plus A, go to input and select the object info. Let's place it here. And here you can see that this object info node has six options of output. And in this chapter, we'll be covering these two options because they are the most commonly used. And currently we'll be starting with this random output option. So this random output option basically assigns random colors to your object. Like one of them will be blue colored, one of them will be yellow colored, and all of them will still have the same material. That is the material point zero zero one. See, the material is identified not only by its color, but also by its metallic nature or the roughness and all the other things like emission also. So, for example, if I increase the metallic nature, you will notice that all these UV spheres now look very shiny and have a metallic surface. But to give them different colors, I'll be using this object info node. And to set those different colors, I'll be using a color ramp. So I'll press shift plus A, go to converter and select the color ramp. Let's place it here. Now I'll take this object info node and move it here. And since there are five different UV spheres, we have to create five different colors. But currently there are only two pointers by default in the color ramp. One is this black colored and the second one is this white colored. To add new pointers, click on this plus icon here. Now there are three pointers and I'll add two more. And now we have five pointers. And I'll change their position so that they look equally placed away from each other. So I'll place this one here and I'll take this third pointer and adjust it in the middle. And you can even change the position from this POS option which stands for the position. So if I select this and to place it in the middle, I'll type 0.5 and now it's in the middle. Similarly, I'll also select this one and I'll set the position at 0.75. Now I'll select the second pointer here and change its position to 0.25. Now they're perfectly placed away from each other at equal distances. And to set different colors, I'll select the first pointer here, click on this black area to change the color and we'll increase the brightness with the help of this brightness slider. Now suppose I set the first color to blue color and to see the changes here, I'll go to the object info, take this random socket and connect it to the factor and in the color ramp go to the color socket and connect it to the base color it appears like this because one of the pointers is blue colored while the others are either gray or white colored but let's first set different colors on each pointer so I'll select the second pointer here, go to the color menu, increase the brightness and let's change this color to green color. Similarly, I'll select the third pointer and let's also change its color by going here and I'll increase its brightness again and let's change it to red color. Similarly with the fourth pointer and I'll change its color to yellow. So I'll take this to the yellow color. Similarly with the last one, I'll go to this color option and let's change it to pink color. Now it appears like this because the colors at different pointers in the color ramp are not constant. They are blending with each other and to make them constant, click on this drop down menu where it is written linear and select the constant. And now you can see here that these UV spheres are having different colors except for these two UV spheres which are having blue color. And that's because we have selected the random output here, which means that it will randomly assign these colors to any UV spheres and in any number, meaning that the UV spheres will have 
have random colors and some of them might have some common color as well and you can even adjust these colors by moving these pointers in different directions like when i just move this last pointer then the color of this uv sphere changed from yellow to pink and that's how the random output for this object info node works now the second output socket that we'll discuss here is this object index socket so if i take this and connect it to the factor i see that all of these uv spheres now have the blue color assigned to them and that's because we have to assign each uv sphere a separate object index number manually in blender for this you have to go to the object properties here then you have to click on the relations and here you have an option of pass index now the pass index means the same as object index so different objects can have different pass index values and based on these values they will be assigned different colors here so suppose i take the first one and change the pass index value to one then i see a color change here but we'll observe it later on first i'll select the second one and let's change the value to two similarly the third one and let's change the value to 3 again. Fourth one, we'll assign the value 4. And fifth one, we'll assign the value of 5. Now, all of them are having the same color, that is the pink color. And the reason for this is that the object info transfers the value to the color ramp in between 0 and 1 only. But right now, we have set value in the pass index or the object index, which is greater than 1. So it is restricting all the values to a value of 1, meaning that the object info is sending the output that all of these UV spheres have the object index value of 1 and not the respective values and since the color ramp also works from 0 to 1 where we have assigned the blue color to 0 and it gradually increases here and at the position of 1 we have this pink color and as a result all these uv spheres now have the pink color assigned to fix this we need to add a new node here which is the math node so basically i'll use the math node to change the output that is generating from the object info node and to see how this works i'll press shift plus a go to converter and select the math now i'll place it in between both these nodes and left click to finalize and now they are connected together since i need to reduce their value from numbers like 1 2 3 4 5 to a value between 0 to 1 i need to divide them so i'll go to this drop down menu and here you have lots of functions that we'll discuss in this course in the future chapters but right now we'll select the divide and in the value option you have to enter the number of uv spheres in your scene since we have five objects so i'll enter five and press enter and here you see that you have objects with five different colors but the same material assigned to them and this is the use of this object index socket in the object info node so whenever you are modeling something where you have a large number of objects which need to have material with same roughness or the same metallic nature or basically the same material but you want them to have different colors then you can use this object info node to assign them some random colors so this was all in the object info node although this was a very short chapter but it's one of those powerful tools which you must know while learning blender and so this brings us to the end of this chapter our next chapter is gonna be the chapter number 21 where we'll be practically using all our knowledge of material textures and nodes that we have covered in this course till now because we'll be making some actual materials like various metals and even some textures like wood and we'll be starting this with the basic shaders part one in the next chapter so don't forget to subscribe to our channel press that notification bell so that you can get timely updates about the upcoming chapters thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one